Okay, I think we're live. We managed to do this without any technical issues first time round. I'll be very impressed. Um, guys, I'm just going to put the light on because it's a bit good here. One second. Oh, that's better. Excellent. All right, guys and girls, good evening. Um, happy Thursday. Welcome to our very first ever virtual quiz. Um, I'm just going to um, explain how it's going to work. I can see a few people joining. I can see a few people dropping off as well because they don't like my face very much. Um, but I'm just going to run through how this is going to work today um, and tell you exactly what's what. So while well, there's people joining, um, I just want to say again, good evening. Thanks for, thanks for tagging along. Um, so what we've got tonight is a virtual quiz that consists of five rounds, which you can see just there. We have got general trivia, geography, music trivia, sport, and at the movies. So they're going to be our five rounds. It is my plan, um, time allowing to get three rounds done before eight o'clock. Then we'll go out and we'll do the um, clap for carers. It's very important that we do that tonight. So we'll take a break around just before eight until about just about uh, five past eight. And then we'll kick off with the last two rounds, um, which should take us through to about half past, uh, half past eight or so, I should think. All right. So um, before we start, I'll explain how it works. So each round will be worth, there's 10 questions in each round. Each round will be worth uh, 20 points. So two points for every answer you get correct. It's just for fun. Play along with your friends, play along with your family. It's just a bit of a laugh, a bit of fun, a um, bit of a way to kill time for a little while. Um, keep a track of your scores. And at the end in the comments box, please do feel free to put your scores in. Let us know how you got on. Um, scores will be out of 100. Before we start the first round, one thing I just want to make clear, it's important to me, um, whereas this is no means mandatory at all, I just want this to be for fun as a bit of way to, to, to kill some time. The Air Ambulance Service is currently doing a drive to raise £20,000 um, to provide personal protection equipment to their crew. So they're going to continue flying and saving lives throughout this um, coronavirus pandemic. If you can find it within yourselves to donate a few pounds to that appeal, there is a Facebook link on the subject line, a uh, title line of this virtual quiz tonight. Please do click on that link and just pop on and donate whatever you can. Like I said, it's by no means mandatory, but it's an amazing service and it really could do with any donation you could possibly give. So if you could pop on anytime during this quiz, after the quiz, whenever, please do do that. I'll be very, very appreciative. Okay, one final thing before we start. I shouldn't have to say it, but I'm going to. Please don't cheat. Um, even though it is for fun, it doesn't matter if you win or you lose. There's no one's coming first or second, really. If you cheat, it's a virtual quiz. It makes you a virtual cheat. Let's not do it. That's no point. All right, cool. Hope you have all got a drink. Can't do a pub quiz without a pint. So, pen and paper at the ready. We're going to start with our first round. So, here we go. This is general trivia. And this, I'll repeat each question once, okay? So, I'll do each one twice. Um, this is general trivia. And this is question one. Which annual race is four miles and 374 yards long? Which annual race is four miles and 374 yards long? A few comments coming through, a few people saying hello, which is nice. And to the bar for a couple of pints, love it. All right, number two, House of Fun was the only UK number one single for which band? House of Fun was the only UK number one single for which band? All right, number three. Which boxer was known as the Louisville Lip? Which boxer was known as the Louisville Lip? Remember, folks, don't type any... Uh, any answers in the comments box because you're only going to be giving answers to other people. So let's not do that. Just a reminder. All right, number four. Which UK TV channel began broadcasting in 1964? Which UK TV channel began broadcasting in 1964? Cheers. Number five. What is the traditional name for the Wednesday on which Lent begins? What is the traditional name for the Wednesday on which Lent begins? Number six, 
Which company is the world's largest manufacturer of rubber tires? Which company is the world's largest manufacturer of rubber tires? It's weird not seeing anybody when I'm doing this. It's very odd. Number seven, what type of fish is Nemo in Finding Nemo? What type of fish is Nemo in Finding Nemo? Number eight, which sign of the zodiac is represented by two fish? Which sign of the zodiac is represented by two fish? Nice to see a few comments coming through, a few hellos. Number nine, the Reverend W. Audrey, A-W-D-R-Y, the Reverend W. Audrey created which children's character? The Reverend W. Audrey created which children's character? And number 10, what is the capital city of Croatia? What is the capital city of Croatia? All right, it's the first round done. That's how quick we get through them. So like I said, my plan will be to do those first three rounds, hopefully give you the answers to them as well. If not, we'll do that after our, after our um, clap the carers at eight o'clock. Basically, don't tell anyone else, but I'm making this up as I go along. Um, all right, so that's the first round done. General trivia done and dusted. I'll put that to one side. We're going to do some geography uh, in just a sec. A lot of comments coming on my uh, feed saying Green Door. That's a running joke at one of my pubs. Very nice. All right, so here we go then. This is geography, so we'll start our second round now. Geography round two, question one. Which islands do Jersey and Guernsey belong to? It's a nice easy start for that round, right? Which islands do Jersey and Guernsey belong to? Number two, what city is both the capital and the biggest city in the state of Mississippi? What city is both the capital and the biggest city in the state of Mississippi? Pop a little comment in the box. Let me all know what you're drinking at home. Number three, which country does Greenland belong to? Which country does Greenland belong to? Carol's on the gin and tonic. Good work, Carol. Number four, which Italian city is built on water? Which Italian city is built on water? Emily Rimmers on Corona, you be careful with that. Number five. Which American state is more northern, Arizona or Utah? Which American state is more northern, Arizona or Utah? <laughs> How's that strongbow cloudy apple looking, Nick? Nice. Number six. What is the biggest lake in the UK's Lake District? What is the biggest lake in the UK's Lake District? Number seven, what is the smallest country in the world by area and population? What is the smallest country in the world by area and population? I can tell you now by looking at all your comments, most of you are on the alcohol tonight, which is a good work. And number eight, what is the second largest country in Europe after Russia? 
what is the second largest country in Europe after Russia? Nikki Brightwell's on the road, eh? Which means she's drunk already. If you can't spell a four letter word, you're in trouble tonight, Nikki, get Nikki Brightwell. Number nine, what is the capital of Colombia? What is the capital of Colombia? And number 10, which is the largest Caribbean island? Which is the largest Caribbean island? Okay, so that's your geography round done. So the answers to those two rounds will come up after I've done uh, round three with you. And that will take us nicely up to just before eight o'clock, I should think, which is working well. Plenty of nice comments coming through. Keep them up, guys. Thanks very much for joining us. Um, for those that weren't here at the start and did miss the start, um, I just want to point out, um, I am trying to raise a little bit of money for the Air Ambulance Service uh, to help them raise... Um, but tell them the rest of the money to provide PPE for the crew. So if you do click on the link that's in the heading for this quiz tonight, if you can afford to give something, please do. It's not mandatory. I'm not asking you or forcing you, should I say, to do so to take part. I just think it would be a nice thing to do if you can afford it. All right. So music trivia is our third round tonight. This is a round I think most of you are going to do pretty well on. Everyone seems to love a bit of music. So here we go. Music trivia. Question number one, which rock band released the album Hysteria in 1987? Which rock band released the album Hysteria in 1987? Great album. Number two, who was addicted to love in 1989. Who was addicted to love in 1989? That's Carol asking, is there a meatloaf question? Would it be one of my quizzes if there wasn't? Just watch this space. Number three, what was the name of Gladys Knight's backing band? What was the name of Gladys Knight's backing band? It's not as nice out of the can. Number four, Hot Fuss and Sam's Town are hit albums for which band? Hot Fuss and Sam's Town are hit albums for which band? Number five, Born This Way, Bad Romance and Paparazzi are UK number ones for which female singer? Born This Way, Bad Romance and Paparazzi are UK number ones for which female singer? Number six, who released a best of album in the 1980s with Bonnie Tyler entitled Heaven and Hell? Who released the best of album in the 1980s with Bonnie Tyler entitled Heaven and Hell? Number seven. Who had a best-selling album in 2005 called Back to Bedlam? Who had a best-selling album in 2005 called Back to Bedlam? Number eight, which song was Elton John inspired to write after a visit to Russia? 
Which song was Elton John inspired to write after a visit to Russia? <laughs> Amy says, may have had too much wine. I've just started talking to Lee. You can talk to me. I'm not going to say much back to you personally, but yeah, I think you've had too much wine. Number nine, who had a hit in the 1990s singing about his crocodile shoes? Who had a hit in the 90s singing about his crocodile shoes? It's weird doing a quiz sat down. And number 10, which two songs have reached number one with the word Fandango in their lyrics? Which two songs have reached number one with the word Fandango in their lyrics? And I'll let you ponder that one for a moment, because you can all think of one straight away and then you're struggling to think of the other. Um, ponder that one and then we'll give you the answers in a moment to those three rounds we've just done. Um, score them up, try us a cheat, be honest. Jamie Cripps wants a wave. There you go, mate. Um, be honest with your scoring when we do it in a second. You'll have 60 points you've played for so far. And I'll give you the answers to them in just a, a minute's time. And that should take us through to just before eight. If we need to start round four before the clap for carers, we will. Loads of messages coming through, guys, on the phones, on the uh, YouTube. So... Thanks for tuning in so many of you. I really do appreciate it. And hopefully it is breaking up your week a little bit and giving you something other than TV to do for, for an hour or so. All right, we're ready for some answers. So I want to give you the answers now then to general trivia, first of all. So remember, two points for each answer. Mark these up. So number one then was which annual race is four miles and 374 yards long? That's the university boat race. Uh, number two, House of Fun was the only UK number one single for which band? Madness. Number three, which boxer was known as the Louisville Lip? That's Muhammad Ali. Number four, which UK TV channel began broadcasting in 1964? BBC Two. Number five, what is the traditional name for the Wednesday on which Lent begins? That is Ash Wednesday. Number six, interesting how well you got, how, how well you did with this. Which company? is the world's largest manufacturer of rubber tires, Lego. Number seven, what type of fish is Nemo in Finding Nemo? It's a clownfish. Number eight, which sign of the zodiac is represented by two fish? That's Pisces. Nine, the Reverend W. Audrey created which children's character? Thomas the Tank Engine. And number 10, what is the capital city of Croatia? Zagreb. So, Hopefully you all did all right on that. Let's see how you did on geography. That was round two. So here you go, this was number one. Which islands did Jersey and Guernsey belong to? That's the Channel Islands. Number two, what city is both the capital and the biggest city in the state of Mississippi? Jackson. Three, which country does Greenland belong to? Denmark. Number four, which Italian city is built on water? That's Venice. Five, which American state is more northern? Arizona or Utah? That's Utah. Number six, what is the biggest lake in the UK's Lake District? Lake Windermere. Seven, what is the smallest country in the world by area and population? Vatican City. Number eight, what is the second largest country in Europe after Russia? That's Ukraine. Nine, what is the capital of Colombia? Bogota. And ten, what is the largest Caribbean island? Cuba. I think we're probably going to have time to get round four in before we uh, take our break at eight o'clock. All right, so round three there, music trivia. I can see some scores coming through for those first couple of rounds. Got some good scores coming through as well. Very good. All right, so here we go, the music trivia. This was round three and this was number one. Which rock band released the album Hysteria in 1987? Def Leppard. Two, who was addicted to love in 1989? That's Robert Palmer. Number three, what was the name of Gladys Knight's backing band? The Pips. Four, Hot Fuss and Samstown are hit albums for which band? The Killers. Five, Born This Way, Bad Romance and Paparazzi are UK number ones for which female singer? That's Lady Gaga. 
Number six, this is the one from, judging by a few comments you were expecting in somewhere along the line. Number six, who released the best of album in the 80s with Bonnie Tyler entitled Heaven and Hell? That was Meatloaf. Seven, who had a best-selling album in 2005 called Back to Bedlam? James Blunt. Eight, which song was Elton John inspired to write after a visit to Russia? That was Nikita. Uh, nine, who had a hit in the 90s singing about his crocodile shoes? Jimmy Nail. And number 10, which two songs have reached number one with the word Fandango in their lyrics? So you get one point for each of these, one point for Bohemian Rhapsody and another point for Whiter Shade of Pale. So have a little look, see how you're getting on. So oh, Nathan got Lego. Well done, Nathan. 18, 14, 18. Okay, you got some good scores coming through here. Very good. Sport might make a bit of a difference. What we got? So 10 2. I think we should just, uh, I'm a little bit ahead of schedule, but I'll say it's the first one. I'd have no idea how long this is going to take. So um, let's see how we go then. All right, so let's go on to round four. So round four tonight is sport. Um, Trish says she's crap. Come on, Trish. Be more optimistic. Here we go. This is sport then. This is round four. Number one, who was the last British player to win the Wimble, uh, the women's singles title at Wimbledon? Stick my teeth back in there. I had half a Guinness. Who was the last British player to win the women's singles title at Wimbledon? If I'd have been recording this to load up, I'd have started again purely because of that. Fifty-one out of sixty. That's a good score so far. Doing well there, Jim. Number two, on a dartboard, which number lies between two and three? Now, normally, if we were in a pub doing this, loads of you would turn and look at the dartboard now, but unless you've got one in your lounge, which you might have. Number three, what was basketball player Irvin Johnson's nickname? What was basketball player Irvin Johnson's nickname? That's an easy one, right? Number four, which former champion jockey was imprisoned for tax fraud in 1987? Which former champion jockey was imprisoned for tax fraud in 1987? Amy, did you only get two points on geography? Is that right? Or have you forgotten to put a one in front of that or something? Or maybe a zero after it? Put a little comment, let me know. Number five, in which sport is part of the playing area called the apron? In which sport is part of the playing area called the apron? Just a reminder, Nikki Brywell, I know you've had a lot of road day, but it is two points for a correct answer, not one. Number six, with which football club would you most likely associate Matt Letizia? With which football club would you most likely associate Matt Letizia? Number seven, in 1980, who became the only boxer to knock out Muhammad Ali? In 1980, who became the only boxer to knock out Muhammad Ali? Number eight, what colour rose do you associate with Lancashire Cricket Club? What colour rose do you associate with Lancashire Cricket Club? Number nine, what is the highest score a judge can award in figure skating? What is the highest score a judge can award in figure skating? It's very quiet. I'm used to having some drunks sat behind me. So if I open my window, I can probably hear Pete Harding singing and shouting somewhere. 
If you don't go to the Webellis quiz, you won't know what that meant. And number 10, in 1988, who became the first boxer to have won world championships in five different weight categories? In 1988, who became the first boxer to have won world championships in five different weight categories? There's a few people who do go to the Webellis quiz that have put some comments in the box now laughing at my uh, Pete Harding comment. They know what I meant. Or shouting the wrong answers. The thing is, he thinks they're the right answers. If you're watching, Pete, it's true. All right, so that's our sport round. And now it's taken us up to five to eight. I'm thinking we probably don't have time to start the fifth round before we do our clap for carers. Um, so what we'll do is I'm going to fill a couple of minutes um, by asking you, well, first of all, I'm just going to say that if this... Um, if this is well received, and it looks like it's well received to a to a degree um, so far. If it is, I am going to plan on doing this each week until the um, pubs reopen. Obviously, it's not the same as being in a pub and having some proper pints and having the banter and seeing you all and, and all the rest of it. But if this is well received and it is something you want me to keep doing, I'll be happy to do so. Obviously, I'll mix the subjects up, so I won't do these subject these topics next week. Um, I will do some chopping and changing, um, but I will make this a weekly feature and. If you subscribe to the YouTube channel, um, I will pop a couple of rounds on occasionally as well, just to give you something to, to do in the week. Um, but for this week, uh, one final reminder before we go out and do our clap for carers. Um, there is that link, that Facebook link. If you do want to donate to the Air Ambulance to help them uh, buy some PPE, please do that. You've got a couple of minutes to do that, actually, before we go out and do our clap for carers. Um, it's 7.57 by my book. So that is enough time to go and recharge your glasses. Get yourself a drink, get ready to go outside. Um, we'll do um, some applause for a few minutes to clap the fantastic NHS and frontline staff that are tackling this ridiculously horrible um, virus. Um, and then when we come back, we'll do round five and then I'll give you the answers to rounds four and five. And then you can post some comments in the uh, comment section and let me know how you've done. Um, so 60, 80 points now would have been played for. So you're getting on. Um, that's nice. I'm getting some comments here. Someone in Buenos Aires in Argentina playing along. Hello from uh, rugby. <laughs> That's nice to see you. Thanks for doing that. Feel sorry for me. I'm stuck in with Paul. Paula, if you are self isolated with Paul Lewis, I feel for you very, very much. Um, all right, guys. So three minutes to eight. I'm going to put this on pause now. Um, I can't put it on pause. So I'm actually going to do a live feed of my kitchen for you for a few minutes. Um, <laughs> and. Have a nice little look at my uh, Superman canvas or something on the wall. Um, I'm going to go and uh, get ready to do our clap for carers in two minutes' time. We'll come back here um, about four or five minutes past eight, and we'll pick up again where we leave off. I've had a few people drop out. I guess they don't want to be uh, coming back in next week. But there's still a lot of people on here, so hopefully you will. Um, right, I'm going to go out. We'll do our clap for carers, and I shall be back in about five minutes' time, um, and we'll do round five. So this will keep feeding through, guys. I'm not logging off because I can't. Enjoy my kitchen. Back soon.
Get on, get on me back. With another Guinness. Okay, guys and girls, I'm hoping you're all back. Um, how fantastic was that? I don't know where about... Um, where all of you are, and I don't know how many people came out around here, that was a lot of applause and a lot of banging pots and pans, and it's quite emotional, isn't it? It's quite fantastic that people are coming out and doing that, so um, that was excellent. So I'm just going to give it another minute, um, make sure everyone comes back. Um, a lot of people are back already, so well played to all of you going out and doing that. I need a beer, I can't do a quiz without beer, and I'm ready to go. Cool. All right, so... A lot of comments from people saying they're coming back. Um, yep, I think we're good to go. I think we're good. Um, all right, guys, so 
we just finished round four just what so we've, we've only got one round left um so ne next week i'll work on the timings a little bit and uh let's say we've had to make this up as we go a little bit and i didn't know how the timings were going to work so we've got one round left it's a movie round um so after this round i'll give you the answers to those last two rounds um and then that will be us done um until next week so oh, look, a whole street just came out in dunchurch that's fantastic well done everyone well done all right so at the movies in our fifth and final round here we go then this is question one robert john burke replaced peter weller as the title character in the third installment of which film series first one's a great film john uh, robert john burke replaced peter weller as a title character in the third installment of which film series Number two, which Shakespeare play was made into a 1996 film starring Leonardo DiCaprio and Claire Danes? Which Shakespeare play was made into a 1996 film starring Leonardo DiCaprio and Claire Danes? Listen, it's nice. Oh, it's a nice sound, isn't it? Just answer that one while I pour a drink. Cheers. To get it all out and we go there you are. all right number three which film star is associated with the phrase here's looking at you kid which film star is associated with the phrase here's looking at you kid four kevin hart voices a rabbit called snowball in which animated movie and its sequel Kevin Hart voices a rabbit called Snowball in which animated movie and its sequel? So I'm getting a message asking me for um, a normal proper music quiz next week. I don't know if a uh, uh, music round. I don't see any reason why I can't do that. I'll have a practice with it and see how it comes along, uh, comes across, but that should be all right. Um, number five, a tiger called Richard Parker is a character in which 2012 film? A tiger called Richard Parker is a character in which 2012 film? Yeah, someone's saying there might be some copyright issues to do the uh, to do the music round, which is what I was thinking, which is why I'm going to look into it first. Uh, number six, who starred with Angelina Jolie in The Bone Collector? That's a great film. Who starred with Angelina Jolie in The Bone Collector? Number seven. Which actor plays the title character in three John Wick movies? Which actor plays the title character in three John Wick movies? Number eight. Which James Cameron film won more Oscars? Was it Titanic or Avatar? Which James Cameron film won more Oscars, Titanic or Avatar? Nikki Bright, well, I'm just reading your comment. I think, Paul, who direct? Oh, hold on. I've got an unstable connection. Sorry, are you there? I just have a little message come up saying your, your connection is unstable. I think so am I. Um, I did freeze, but I'm back, Claire, I'm back. Number nine, who directed A Clockwork Orange? Who directed A Clockwork Orange? And number 10, who played the penguin opposite Michael Keaton's Batman? Who played the penguin opposite Michael Keaton's Batman? There we go. That's our uh, last question from our last round. So a lot of comments from people who have got usernames, so I don't actually know who you are, but um, 
by the way you're talking, I think I, I should know who you are. So if you've got a username that doesn't identify who you are, tell me who you are so I know. All right, so that's the last round done. So what I'm going to do now, five more minutes, that's a little bit. I'm going to give you some answers to both the sports and the movers round. And uh, then we'll be done for, well, for another week. All right, so sports. Here we go. Remember, two points for a right answer. That's two points, Nikki. Number one, who was the last British player to win the Wimb women's singles title at Wimbledon? That was Virginia Wade. Number two, on a dartboard, which number lies between two and three? 17. Three, what was basketball player Irvin Johnson's nickname? Magic. Number four, which former champion jockey was in prison for tax fraud in 1987? Lester Piggott. Five, in which sport is part of the playing area called the apron? Golf. Number six, with which football club would you be most likely to associate Matt Letitia, Southampton? Seven, in 1980, who became the only boxer to knock out Muhammad Ali? Larry Holmes. Number eight, what colour rows do you associate with Lancashire Cricket Club? Red. Nine, what is the highest score a judge can award in figure skating? Six. And number 10, in 1988, who became the first boxer to have won world championships in five different weight categories? Sugar Ray Leonard. Wow, there's people still clapping. Well, that's pretty outstanding. Um, all right, and round five then was at the movies. The one we just did, this was number one. Robert John Burke replaced Peter Weller as the title character in the third instalment of which film series? Robocop. Number two, which Shakespeare play was made into a 1996 film starring Leonardo DiCaprio and Claire Danes? That's Romeo and Juliet. Three, which film star is associated with the phrase, here's looking at you, kid, Humphrey Bogart? Number four, Kevin Hart voices a rabbit called Snowball in which animated movie and its sequel, The Secret Life of Pets. Number five, a tiger called Richard Parker is a character in which 2012 film, Life of Pi? Number six, who starred with Angelina Jolie in The Bone Collector? Denzel Washington. Seven, which actor plays the title character in three John Wick movies? That's Keanu Reeves. Eight, which James Cameron film won more Oscars? Was it Titanic or Avatar? It was Titanic at 111. Uh, Avatar won three. Nine, who directed A Clockwork Orange? Stanley Kubrick. And number 10 was who played the Penguin opposite Michael Keaton's Batman, Danny DeVito. All right, guys and girls. So... Um, that's it. That's our five rounds done. Um, be very, very interested to see how you've got on. So drop me a message or put something in the feed. Let me know. Apparently the figure skating score now goes up to 10. It used to be six once upon a time. Can't be right about everything. If you put 10, can't clarify it. Can't, it's fine. Have it. I'll change it for next time if I ever ask it again. All right. So, um, yeah, there you go. So five rounds done. Let me know your scores. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Please just give me some comments. Let me know. Um, I've replaced the six-point system in 2004. Well, I wrote that round today. I don't know where I got that from then. Um, okay, so please do let me know in your comments if you've enjoyed it. Please come back next week. Um, I just want to do a huge thank out, a huge shout out to thank the four pubs. We do this at every week as well. The Web Ellis, the Lawford Arms, uh, Waterside and the Hollybush. Um, we'll be coming back to you as soon as this, uh, this self-isolation is over, as soon as the lockdown is lifted. Um, but in the meantime, we'll keep coming live here. So, Thanks for your support, guys. Really appreciate you coming on. Really hope you've enjoyed yourselves. Uh, we'll do it again in a week's time. Um, some lovely comments coming up. So thanks for that. And I'm going to end the stream now and I'll see you all soon. Um, take care, guys. Stay safe, all of you. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.